Hello everybody, I hope you are doing great. I'm here with a new video about your aviation career. Today, I'm going to talk about another repetitive question in your most pilot job interviews. And one of the most highlighted misinterpretations of pilots. What is V1 and how is the correct go and stop decision near Viva. I'm Captain Said, and you are watching me on Aviation at Home channel cooperated with Camille Aviation. So if you are ready, let's get started. As you know, every Friday evening I will have an interesting training video for you. So, if you are interested in aviation and these kind of training videos, don't forget to subscribe uh, our YouTube channel. And now, if you're ready, let's get into our discussion. What is V1 and how is the correct go and stop decision near V1? It was determined when the aviation industry produced the takeoff safety training aid in 1992 that the existing definition of V1 might have caused confusion because they did not make it clear that V1 is the maximum speed at which the flight crew must take the first action to reject a takeoff. The US National Transport Safety Board NTSB, also noted in their 1990 study of rejected takeoff accidents that the late initiation of rejected takeoffs was the leading cause of runaway, uh, uh, runway overrun accidents. As a result, the FAA has changed the definition of V1 as follows. V1 means the maximum speed in the takeoff at which the pilot must take the first action the first action, for example, apply brake, reduce thrust, deploy speed brake, or what else is on the aircraft AFM, to stop the airplane within the accelerate stop distance available. And V1 also means the minimum speed in the takeoff, following a failure of engine at which the pilot can continue the takeoff and achieve the required height above the takeoff surface within the takeoff distance. Pilots know that V1 is fundamental to making the go and stop decision under runway limited condition. If the rejected procedure is initiated at V1, the airplane can be stopped before reaching the end of the runway when the takeoff performance in AFM is produced. It assumes an engine failure or even uh, one second before V1 in the runway limited situation. This means the airplane reaches a height of 35 feet over the end of the runway or higher if the decision is to continue the takeoff within reasonable limit. Even if the engine failure occur earlier than the assumed one second before V1, a decision to continue the takeoff will mean that the airplane is lower than 35 feet at the end of the runway because the acceleration is reduced. But it's still flying. For example, if the engine fails two seconds before V1 and the decision is to, may, uh, to go, the airplane will reach a height of 15 to 20 feet 
at the end of the runway. I mean 737 is like that. Maybe other airplanes have some different item. Other reasons that reject occur were for configuration, I don't know, indication or light, crew coordination problem, bird strike or ATC problem. It is important to note that the majority of past RTO accidents were not the result of an RTO initiated because of engine failure. With normal takeoff thrust, the airplane should easily reach height of 150 feet over the end of the runway. Again for 737, I'm not sure about Airbus 320. And uh, the pilot has the full length of the runway to stop the airplane if air uh, turn back is required. Making the go and stop decision start long before V1. Early de uh, detection, good crew coordination, uh, quick reaction are the keys to successful takeoff or stop. So, for a conclusion, we can say the correct definition of V1 is the maximum speed in takeoff at which the pilot must take the first action to stop the airplane within the accelerated stop distance available. In this definition, it is clearly st uh, stated that, uh, to abort takeoff, uh, the pilot must take the first action at V1, which means if engine failure occur or any other failure occurs exactly at V1, we must continue our takeoff because we cannot make the first action at V1 exactly at the same time. Thank you for watching me on Aviation at Home channel. I will be back uh, with another interesting subject in next Friday. Sit back, relax, and enjoy your training. See you on next Friday.